Hey, everybody. Hello. 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 Good afternoon. Hi, everybody. How are you guys doing? Everyone having a good day? It's not for, it's not Friday yet, but it's pretty good <laughs> so far. I'm trying to look figure out all this technical stuff on how to. Can you guys oh, see this the screen is that, that I'm you? sharing? Yeah. Yes, yeah. we can. Okay. <laughs> I haven't used Zoom in so long. You would think I'd be really good at it by now. I <laughs> Lucky <Zoom> you. <laughs> so, okay. Great. Yeah, I'm under uh, my wife's name, Sarah. So this is Matt here. So, that's how often I use Zoom. It's my wife. You're, you're lucky there, Matt. All right. I, we're just going to wait a few more minutes because there's a bunch more people logging on. I don't want anyone to miss anything. Hello. <laughs> Hello. There is a lot of people, which is awesome. Yeah, you can have your camera on or off, um, whatever you prefer. If you're eating dinner, that's okay. You can have your camera off. Cute little baby. Okay, there's a few more stragglers, then we'll get started in a minute once they get on. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and start and then if anyone else pops up, I'll just add them. But nice to meet you guys. Um, I'm Mac. If you guys have emailed me or communicated with me, um, this is the face to the name. Hopefully um, our interaction so far has been good. <laughs> um, just I figured I would just start with introducing myself. Um, Darren used to do this job. So if you've done this before and worked with Darren, I'm a new face if you are confused. Um, he is now the director of player development, um, which kind of oversees all of the rec programs. Um, so you will still kind of communicate with him in different scenarios too. So um, my name is Mac, short for Michaela. I coach for Loud Soccer. I am in the 2012 Girls. Um, so if you know anybody who plays in the 2012 Girls League um, or age group, they might have me. Um, they might know who I am. Um, other than that, um, I graduated from George Mason University with physical education as my major. Um, and I just started working for Loudoun about a year ago, officially, um, but I've been on and off with Loudoun for a while now. Um, so we'll be working pretty closely together throughout the season. And um, I view it as my job to make your season super easy <laughs> and successful. So if you guys need anything, that the season, don't be afraid to shoot me an email. If I can do it for you, um, I will do it for you. So um, don't be afraid to contact me. I want to help you. I want your season to be good for both you and your players. So um, hopefully we can have a good dynamic and just um, make the season really great, especially after COVID and people didn't really get to do much. Um, 
I want this to be refreshing and easy for people and something that is, you know, good in their week. Um, so that's kind of just how I start. Um, I'm just going to go through some basic things. The slideshow um, just kind of says some rules, regulations, things that you need to know or would be helpful for you to know. Um, and then at the end, if you guys have any questions, you guys can ask me that or you can just shoot me an email or call me later and we can talk. But people, <laughs> people are still jumping on. Okay. Um, so the first slide is just our mission and philosophy. If you guys don't know it, it's to create soccer players, coaches, and teams of strong character committed to achievement on the field and in our community. Um, and our core values kind of, oops, um, correlate with that. Our first one is fun. We want um, just everything to be fun. If it's not fun, then something needs to change because overall, a lot of people have priorities of, you know, doing really well or being a good player. Um, at the end of the day, we want people to just enjoy what they're doing and do it because they love it, um, not because, um, what they, you know, can do um, for the program. Um, integrity, fairness, teamwork, stewardship. Um, on top of having fun, you want um, players to get something out of it. So um, we want this to be beneficial. We want um, both players and coaches to leave the season um, just a little bit, you know, better than they came in with learning something new or, you know, facing adversity head on or, Anything like that, um, I think soccer or any sport is really, really incredible for building character. Um, and so we want to represent that well. And so our next slide kind of says, we, that starts with us. Gosh, I can't work technology. There you go. Um, that starts with us. So however we lead, um, kids are going to either rise or go down to that. So we can either put a crown over players' heads and say, this is the kind of player and person that you can be and they'll rise to it or we can set a bad example um, and kids will follow suit with that. So just as coaches, I think it's just important for us to keep that in mind and uh, keep our core values in mind so that we are prioritizing that. And we're prioritizing fun, that kids are out there and doing something they love so that they can you know, maybe be passionate about it or maybe you know, do it for a lifetime because you know, it's something they enjoy. Um, but that just, that again, starts with us. So we just wanna be good bearers of that and, and just lead by example. Um, today's topic, so we're going to talk about law and soccer. That's kind of just what we already talked about, just what the mission statement and core values are. Uh, we're going to talk about who the key contacts are. So if you need something um, or have a question about something, who can you contact for that? Um, and then the rest is just like key policies, communication, things that you should know to make the season easy for you. Um, and then if we don't cover anything that you already have a question about, um, let me know because other people probably have a question about that too. So. Yes. Um, but you, I mean, you guys have probably already do a really good job of this. I think everyone's muted, but um, yeah, just meet your mic. It's recorded. So if you know any coaches who are not here um, and want the session or want this um, so they have information, you can go ahead and let them know that's recorded and they can reach out to me and I can get it for them. I also am planning on sending out the slideshow to all of you so that after it, if you, you know, weren't able to take notes or you forgot something, you can have it. You can just go through um, and look at what you missed. Um, okay, so this is kind of just an overview of what the program structure looks like. Um, it starts at micros, which is our youngest kids, and then it goes to minis, which is our preschool, kindergarten ages, and then rec one um, is first and second grade. So that's everybody who's in this Zoom call. Um, Everyone else is in a different program. But um, from there, if you're curious, you can go to UA Academy and Rec 2. UA Academy feeds into travel a little bit better. Um, and then Challenge and then Classic and then High School. Um, so if you have a player who's really, really great um, and you know they want to play travel and they ask you, what's the best thing for us to do? It might be good to advise them to do UA Academy next um, instead of Rec 2. Um, that's just why that information is kind of important so you can direct them well. Um, so here are year around rec opportunities besides this program. There are different supplemental programs that kids can use. If parents are wondering, what can I get my kid involved in? We have summer camps. There's a spring break camp coming up, which is probably the most prevalent right now. Um, if you know kids who are staying for spring break and want to be a part of something, um, they can sign up for the spring break camp and be a part of that. Um, the different supplemental programs are, I think on the next slide, yeah, my mommy 
Daddy and Me is the only program where you can be two and do it. So micro is three, starts at three years old. So if you know somebody who's two and wants to get involved, that would be a good program to direct them to. And then if someone can't do Saturdays, um, the weekday minis is available. And then there's the JDB program, which is student development program and the US 7 pre academy. So if you have someone who's really, really good and want to get involved before you academy, you can do U7 pre academy. Okay. Here are the contacts for you. Um, if you have any questions, I will kind of be your first line, essentially. So if you have any questions or need anything, I'm probably the first person you should go to. Um, if you're in the Micros Maze or Rec One program, that I oversee all of that. And so that's my like direct job. So I'll probably be able to help you the best. Um, if I can't, or it's a, you know, a question that isn't directly related to any of these programs, Darren will be your next um, line of contact. So um, you can contact him and our, all the emails and phone numbers are on the website. So you can get that there. Um, if it's a question or an issue directly related to Rec 2, Challenge, Classic, or High School, that's Karen Corp. She oversees all of that and her contacts also on there. So if it's not related to any of our programs or any of the programs that we're in, she would be the person to contact for that. Um, just so you know. And then if it's a field or scheduling um, question specifically, um, I can get you that information. Um, but the person who will actually know that firsthand is Jamie. Um, I would have to go and ask her first, probably. So if you want to just contact her directly, um, that's probably your easiest route to go. All right. So a lot of you asked about um, support or like session plans, things to use for your practices. Um, this is probably where you're going to find that the best. www.loudandsoccer.com is our main page. And on that page, you can find different session plans. And honestly, any anything related to um, leading your practice or uh, making it better, you can find here. Um, you go to About, Coaches, Coaches Info Center. I mean, you guys can read the slide, but um, you can find that there. I am going to personally send out session plans that you can use. So you will probably be getting an email from me weekly with that, just because I want to make your life easier. Um, so I want to provide you guys with something every week to use, because um, I know a lot of you guys are hesitant to coach because you don't have a lot of experience or you're new. Um, so just to make your life easy and super, super just simple, I'm going to send you guys specific lesson plans and you can use it or you can create your own thing. It's up to you. But just so you have it, um, I'm going to send it to you. But if you want additional stuff, you're like looking for different articles and videos to help you with your own practices, um, you can find that here. So just so you have that. Okay. This is info specifically about equipment pickup. So you guys have to come and pick up all the, your equipment on a specific day. <laughs> Just if you were not aware, it's all on the same day and you're gonna get your equipment. And then there's a session you should go to and we're gonna kind of outline what a session looks like. So I'm gonna be out there with some kids running a session. So that would be good to come to just so you guys can get an idea of what it should look like and what um, the vibes are. <laughs> um, so that's thir so Thursday, the 24th, we're gonna have a Zoom meeting and top 10 coaching tips for a successful season. So you can come to that and that can be helpful for you. Um, if you're new or you don't really know what's going on, you want a little bit of extra help, you can come in to that. And then Saturday, Saturday's the big day um, where you can come pick up your stuff. So the minis and micro session, if you're coaching in minis or micros, 9 a.m. is the session. And then you can pick up your equipment at 10. And if you're doing rec one, 10 o'clock, um, is your session and you can pick up your equipment after at 11. So just make sure you are coming to the right one because a rec one session is going to look pretty different from <laughs> a micro session. Um, and then Sorry, I don't you... mean to interrupt, but I have a no, question. Okay. Um, yeah. Do we have to come at 10 or can it be later than that? Yeah. So I got a few emails actually about people who couldn't come. If you can't make it to pick up your equipment, I'm pretty, I'm here pretty regularly just shoot me an email um, with when you want to come get it or can't come get it and I can accommodate that. So I can make sure it's either ready for you to pick up here or I can make sure I'm here to give it to you if that, makes, if that helps. Yes, that does. But um, if we can come like later in the day, would that be all right or? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I might not, 
I might not be here later in that day specifically to give it to you because my team's in the PWSI tournament, but I can make sure your stuff's ready and I can have it ready for you to just come pick up. Just to just to jump in your Mac, this is this is Darren. Um, the, the equipment pickup is from nine to twelve. So if you can't come during the exact time, you can come before twelve o'clock, and just this, the same process will will happen. Um, the, the the times are just we we have almost over six hundred coaches, so it's just to alleviate some of the crowds and the lines. So um, twelve o'clock is your is your final pickup time. Wonderful, thank you. Perfect. Thanks, and just if, if everybody, if we can hold the, if we can hold the questions till the end, there's we got a lot, a lot to go through, and, and Max got another presentation to do, so uh, there'll 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 be slides through here that we can answer some questions or questions at the end, if you don't mind. Perfect. And then that's at Bond Soccer Park, just so you know where to go. Okay. General reminders: team rosters just went out, um, so keep an eye on that and your teams. Um, you should be sending an email to your team parents. Um, just say, hey, welcome, you're on my team. Um, just kind of introduce yourself. The rosters may change a little bit depending on if somebody reached out, say, hey, I can't do that day or something. Just keep an eye on your roster so you know if no, somebody new has been added or somebody's been taken away. Um, and the next few slides go into some more specifics about equipment. Um, so, I just that. so if you have a perspective player, this has come up a little bit, um, who wants to be on your team, try not to tell them or don't tell them <laughs> that they can definitely be on your team because there may be some logistical things going on, but the direct them to me and I will do my best to accommodate them um, and do what I can. Um, if I can put them on your team and it works, I'll do it, but just don't promise anybody anything because there are some cases where it just doesn't work out, but they can definitely shoot me an email and I'll work with them on that. Um, okay, so team officials for your Saturday games, um, if you are registered as a coach, then you have been, you've gone through a background check, you're clear, um, but the background check is important. We just want to make sure player safety is our priority. So don't let anybody who hasn't officially registered um, come and be a coach on your team. If somebody wants to be an, be an assistant coach or wants to coach with you, that's great. Just have them send me an email and we can get them officially on your team so that we can make sure they go through the background check and have gone through all of those um, hoops because that's important. Um, the players on your team trust you and you're an authority over them. So you just want to make sure we are checking all the boxes so that um, we're prioritizing their safety. Um, yes. All right. So equipment. Equipment is the same for micros, minis, any age that it would be um, across the board. Um, so make sure they're wearing a jersey, um, they have a ball, make shin guards. Shin guards are required. I've gotten a couple emails about whether shin guards are required. Yes, um, players should wear shin guards and they should have a sock over their shin guards. So don't, if a kid shows up with just wearing a shin guard, just tell them, hey, you should put a sock over, over that. Um, if, if, if you look at the weather, just kind of a coaching tip. If you look at the weather, it's supposed to rain on Saturday. It might be a good idea to shoot an email to your team. Hey, just make sure you bring appropriate clothing because you'd be shocked on how many people don't look at the weather um, and just come in, whatever. You know, it can be 30 degrees and somebody would show up in just shorts and it's short. And then they're really cold and it's not enjoyable for them. So um, plenty of water, hand sanitizer, and then approved cleats. The next slide kind of talks about what that means. Um, there's a difference between football, baseball, and soccer cleats. Just make sure um, when you're buying your kick cleats or if you notice someone on your team don't have the, the little one up top. Um, that's just not allowed. People could get hurt that way. Um, no jewelry permitted. So if you have any girls on your team, just make sure they don't have any necklaces, earrings, and like that, that could accidentally hurt them or somebody else. Um, and then hard cash should be padded. So bubble wrap is typically the, mo the most approved way to cover their cast. They can still play. Um, just make sure it's covered so that they don't use it as a weapon and knock somebody unconscious with, the <laughs> with their injury. Um, yes. And then if you didn't know, we're having a, a Dix um, kind of event where you can get a discount if you go to Dix. So if you want to blast it out to your team or take advantage of it yourself. If you go to Dick's um, March 25th to 28th, you'll get a discount on 
um, and the soccer equipment you may need. So if you want to go and take advantage of that and get an extra ball or a pump to pump up your the soccer balls, um, that's a good time to do that because you'll get a big discount. Um, okay, so uniforms. I've gotten a couple of questions about uniforms as well. For micros and minis, you don't they don't have to go purchase their own uniform. Um, kindergarten is the last year where they don't have to. Um, so we will distribute or you'll distribute their uniforms um, at the first session. Um, and then I think you pick those up at the equipment pickup, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and then what comes in that pack that you're given the equipment is a red and white jersey, black shorts and black socks. So then once they're given to the players, make sure that's what they're coming to play in um, to all your sessions. Um, this part's really fun. So we give awards at the end of the season. Uh, we give participation medals. Um, so at the end of the season, we will have your medals kind of divvied out and you'll just have to come pick them up so you can distribute them to your players. Um, and I'll send that our reminder email when that comes because it'll be at the end of the season. But just know that's something that happens. You'll have to go find the table, pick up your medals so you can get them to your players at the end of the last session. Um, so safety reminders, um, COVID safe return to play um, policies. Oh, sorry, <laughs> this is a lot of information. Um, so if you visit our website, and go to COVID-19, um, there's a little tab. It'll go through all of the policies and restrictions. So just to read up on that before you come, just so you know all of the most up-to-date info. Um, and then snacks are permitted, which is the best part of the season. <laughs> so yay, they're back. Um, that's one of your jobs as a coach is to make sure that your snack schedule is completed so that kids have snacks uh, because it's really sad. When they, when they finish the game and they're like, where are my oranges? And they, there aren't any. So just make sure that somebody gets signed up. You can do one parent um, per session and then they're just in charge of bringing snacks or juice boxes for that session. Okay, safe sport. So out of all the certifications you have to do, this is the only one you have to do. So I got a lot of questions about like the SAPT certification. If you're struggling with doing that, that's because you don't have to do it. Um, but if you haven't done the safe sport yet one, or one yet, please do that because that one is required. Um, it's an annual training. There's three modules and it's an, it's 90 minutes old. So you can get it done pretty fast. If you just kind of sit there and do it. Um, but then afterwards, you just have to do a refresher course. So if you're new to coaching, you'll do the three modules, 90 minutes. But if you are returning, you just have to do a refresher. So it's shorter. Um, and then that, sh that info should be in an email that you've gotten. But if you have any questions about that, just let me know. Um, heading is not allowed um, in these ages. So just make sure to remind kids if they're doing it, just be like, hey, use your feet um, just for safety issues. But that also helps with just technique to encourage players. Hey, let's use our feet inside the foot, all this stuff, all the good stuff. Um, yeah, we don't want any concussions on the speaking of concussions. Um, so if you think anybody's gotten a concussion, maybe they did head the ball after you told them to stop or Maybe they, you know, tripped and hit their head on the goal. Um, there's just some things to do. Um, if you think they might have a concussion, take them out. Don't let them play anymore. Um, even if they're your best player, <laughs> just make them come over and take a break for a second. Um, and then just check them um, informally for their symptoms. Do they have a headache? Do you feel sick? Um, just the typical things you would do if a player got injured in any other way. Um, and then just send me an email um, just so I know um and I'm aware and I can fill out the, the right form um and the family must provide a return to play document from a health provider and you'll just send that um to me um but again with that there's more information on the website that you can go to on the information center okay so weather and fields alert don't cancel your sessions because it's raining um don't assume that the fields are closed you will be notified if your field's closed and if you should cancel your session. So you'll get an email um, or a text from me or from Darren or from somebody saying, hey, the fields are closed or because of thunder or lightning, the sessions are canceled today. Um, and that's how you'll know um, to notify your parents. If you're during a session in a source of thunder, there's a 30 minute delay and um, kids should go to their carts, um, which shouldn't be an issue at this age because parents are there already. So they can just go, but don't um, 
if you notice that kids are just standing outside, have them go with their parents to their cars. Um, and then just make sure you have all your players and no one is unaccounted for. Yeah, and then talk, speaking of rain, and we only stop playing if there's lightning or thunder. So if it's raining um, and the fields haven't closed themselves because they're too wet, um, then you can keep playing. So again, don't cancel your session. Um, a game time decision may occur by the lead trainer that's there, um, but just don't assume that it's canceled just because it's raining. Because most likely, if it's not lightning or thundering, we're going to keep the sessions going. Okay, and then communicating with your team. Um, you're the main point of contact for your team. So your players and their parents are probably not going to be emailing me anymore like they have been. They're probably going to email you first. If it's a question you know the answer to, then go ahead and email them. If not, then just forward me their email um, and I can answer it for them. But um, you're going to be the one kind of fielding their questions and then providing them info. So from now on, they're probably not going to get any information if unless it comes from you. Um, so send them a message through your team page for a, with a welcome email and then for any other information you provide them. Um, you can download a, your roster team page. You can download or export your email um, from all the parents on your team. And it's easier to, to do that than to do it the other way. So um, if you just blind copy all of your parents onto the email, um, that's probably the most ideal way to contact them. Okay. And then the Dix Team Manager app is a free app you can use. Um, it syncs with your Sports Connect app. If you haven't downloaded the Sports Connect app, you should do that because it has your schedule and roster. It's very, if you have an older player um, with on soccer, they probably have Team Snap. It's very similar to that um, as the health check feature if we happen to be using that again. And then um, it'll have more information on there. So if you want to download both, it's pretty helpful. Um, and then again, if you have any questions, just shoot me an email. Okay, so here are the schedule and key dates um, that you're going to want to pay attention to. Um, for preschool and pre, yeah, for pre-K, so micros and then pre-K for minis, there's only Saturday sessions, which you guys should, should know already. Um, that starts April 9th. So for micros and minis pre-K, April 9th is your first day. Um, for kindergarten and rec one, you have one practice a week, um, whichever day you requested or got assigned. Um, and that starts the week leading up to it. So March 20, March 28th, I believe, is the first week. Um, so March, yeah. March 5th, kindergarten prices begin. April 9th are all Saturday sessions for all of the ages. And then April 16th is spring break. So there's no session on the Saturday. So you have one session and then a break, and then the rest of your sessions. Um, June 4th is the last session of the season, unless a Saturday gets rained out. Then June 11th will be the makeup date. So, and we'll communicate, or I'll communicate with you about that throughout the season. But if just know if one session does end up getting canceled because of weather, June 11th will be the makeup date for that. Um, and then for the fall season, Late May is when that registration will open. So if you have parents asking, hey, when can we register for the fall because we registered late for the spring and X, Y, Z, just let them know that late May. So they know that. Okay, so then practice for kindergarten. And you probably are going to have half a field. Um, there's a lot of kids <laughs> registered this season, like upward of 6,000. So just know if you're a kindergarten coach, you're probably going to have half a field. You may, some, some sessions have a full field, but it's not the normal and um, just don't, ex don't have the expectations to be a full field. Um, you may be sharing a full field with another team and you can either do your prize together if you want or do it separately, but half a field is what you should go into the season expecting. Um, and then for you, for your leading those practices, again, session plans, you can find resources online, but I'm also gonna do my best to send you a session plan to use each week. Um, and then just be courteous of the team after you. They're pretty back to back. So just try and end five minutes early or do your team pep talk or closer at the side just so that um, coaches can get on five minutes for their practice to, to set up for their stuff. Um, just we're all working together on this one. Um, okay, and then Saturday schedules. This is to be published. I'm still working on the Saturday schedules now, um, but it will be available on your team page when it's posted. So just be checking that. Um, 
so you know when um, it's posted. And then just double check details like time and location on a weekly basis, because while you may end up being the same time and location every week, there's a chance that it may you may not be. So just be checking that because you don't want to assume you're at the same place and then show up at the wrong field or at the wrong time. Um, but the minis and micro schedules will be consistent. So that for rec one, just be checking your schedule. Um, for rec one, with the changes, it may be location, it may be time. Um, checking things. So just try and stay in the loop and try and just be on top of checking your um, notifications so that if we do send you anything, you see it before it's too late. Um, and then every field will have a lead trainer. So that's your point of contact for the day um, for micros and minis. Um, okay, so the next session is, this is what we're talking about. Okay, so for the micro, uh, preschool coaches should bring a first aid kit with ice packs and then the team emergency roster. That's the only thing you need to bring because the team, or not the team, the um, trainer will be there for every session and they'll be leading the session. So they will have the equipment um, and everything they need for that. Um, for minis and pre-K coaches, or pre-K and K coaches, um, you should bring a first aid pack, a game ball, cones, pennies, um, extra jerseys, and team emergency roster, which a lot of us will get at the equipment pickup. So if you don't have a lot of that, don't worry. <laughs> That's why you're coming to pick up equipment so we can get that to you. Um, okay, then just some pre-session tips. Um, try and be, or be at the field before your team gets there because a lot of parents are not gonna know what's going on. Um, so if you're there and we're able to help them, that's ideal. Um, so coaches be there 10 minutes before start time and then communicate to your players to be there five minutes before start time. That way you guys can start on time. <laughs> um, I got a couple of questions. Is, is there any way I can ask? I can't really be on here too long. But, um, sure, it, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I would imagine that it would be the same as uh, elementary school, middle school, um, high school. People make the cut and people don't make the cut, correct? For teens? For what? For teens, like, For like kindergarten. cutting cut. Kindergarten. Yeah, so we don't really cut players at this age um, if they register they get on a team um, typically as long as there's room. Oh, sorry. As I just, long as there's room for them. I just didn't know what to buy. I don't know whether to buy shin guards, if he's a goalie. I don't know whether, if he's a forward, you know, I don't know. It's yeah, so we're not, yeah. So at this age, and this is good for coaches to know, is we're not going to want to just play players in one position. They're going to want to play all over the field. But for a rec, there's no goalie. So you're not going to need to buy them goalie stuff. Um, they play, yeah, okay. there's no goalies, yeah. Um, so I would buy them shin guards in yeah. socks, and then you'll get your jersey at the, at the um. Okay, and I noticed um, in the last previous um, comment you made um, about out, outdoor grass, uh, should we be prepared for both turf and both um, grass and mud? You know, like, is that the only fields they play in or? Uh, yeah, they will most likely be on grass. I don't think that there's any turf fields, um, but you don't need to buy anything specific. I would just, if your player doesn't have cleats, I'd buy them cleats, but um, yeah, just keep it basic. Um, yeah. You don't need to buy turf shoes. <laughs> okay, Move, moving on from that. Okay. Um, Kind of already talked about weather, but wait, this is, yeah. Okay, so the play information for micros, you have seven Saturday sessions for 45 minutes and they're co-ed. So you're gonna have boys and girls on your team um, and all of your sessions are led by trainers. So your main job during those sessions is just to you know be backup for them, make sure players are on the field. If there's, you know, Tommy's over here, you know, not having a good time, you know, try and bring them in just supporting them in managing the players on the field um, the best you can. Um, and then if they ask you to do something like, hey, can you put this going here? Like do that, help them out um, the best you can. 
Um, for pre-K and kindergarten, you have seven sessions for 50 to 55 minutes. Um, Pre-K is co-ed and kindergarten is by gender. So um, just know which one you are. Um, you're gonna do some, oh, I'm just added. Um, so your session is set up. The first part, you're gonna do different activities that your trainer's leading um, for the first three weeks and then you do the last four. But you'll do different activities at the beginning and then you will go into three of your games at the end. So you kind of transition. Um, but that will be laid out for you when you take over. Again, I'll provide just kind of a format session for you to follow, but just know you'll do half and half. So it's not, you're not gonna play a game the full time like you would in um, older ages. You're gonna do different drills and activities for the first part, and then you'll go into the game part. Um, yeah, so games are 3v3. You're gonna have three weeks with the trainer and they will kind of run it. And that's the same as what I said before, your job there is just to manage the players and make sure that you know everything's running smoothly and assist the trainer with anything he needs. And the last floor are on you, um, but it's really easy. Again, at pre-K kindergarten level, like we're all about fun. Um, the session plans are gonna be very detailed and specific. So um, you should you know, be okay if you can read it and you can execute, you'll be fine. Um, and kids just want to be out there. Like we just want to get kids active and having fun with um, people their age. So, um, no, you're not coaching Olympians. Like it's okay. Um, just do your best. You'll be good, and you will have a successful season. Okay. So here's just a little pro tip on how to do this. If you're new or don't really know what to do, um, I would divide your team. I mean, don't tell them this is team squad one and squad two. But mentally, you know, have two different groups. Um, and then you can put one squad in and they'll play against each other um, and they will play against the other team. So at each field, at each time, there's gonna be two teams there. And so you will have, you know, your people versus their people and then you'll have best to kind of um, distinguish who's on whose team. Um, and then you can manage one team and the assistant can manage, or the, um, your assistant coach can manage the other team. That way everyone's playing and nobody's just waiting around. And then, yeah, it looks like this. So you have one person over here and have one group over here. And I always suggest, especially with the younger ages, when you're doing the play um, type, it's like with micros, pre-K, um, it doesn't need to be like structured, like, hey, we're gonna start in the middle. Like they're gonna kind of just do whatever because they're three. Um, if you have like a bunch of people who are not engaged, put two balls in, you know, ball goes out, throw another one in. Um, don't be um, so rigid with the goals because we're not rules sorry um because right they're so little they're not going to do a throw in right they just want to kick a ball around um as long as they know to go this way or that way and you're encouraging them that's all you need to do um the, because the primary goal is to keep players moving um nobody wants to go to a Saturday session and then never touch a ball a single time so if that means throwing three balls in at one point do that um as long as they're on the field playing, like that's what we want. That's the priority. Um, and then rotate players. And now if you have a whole bunch of players, um, you know, 3v3, you know, do, all right, Johnny, Sarah, and Caleb, come on out. And then put those three in, let them play for a minute or two, and then switch them out again. And then keep switching them in and out um, rather than doing like half of you played the first half and then half of you played the second half. You want little, uh, little time out at a time. So just space it out. Um, and then make sure they're drinking water. Oh, I kind of just talked about that. So yeah, we can skip that. Um, we are just not no heading, but trying to have kids not slide tackle either. Um, we don't want three-year-olds <laughs> just throwing themselves onto the ground. Um, just kind of manage that the best you can and encourage them just to stay on their feet and to use their feet when using the ball. Um, okay. So large rosters for each team for micros, um, well, actually for micros and minis, there may be more people on your team than a 3v3 or 4v4 format fits. If you have more, if you're, for example, um, if you have like 13 people on your team rather than 10, you might wanna play 4v4, that's perfectly fine. Um, if there's another team that you're playing against who has no players, they have four players that show up, um, just give, like, maybe give them some players to, to have just so that, 
players are playing. Um, we want to emphasize players being on the field. It's not necessarily super critical that they're playing on their team. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, here's just another pro tip. If there's one player on your team who's really good and typically ends up always having the soccer ball, when you throw in the ball to play, maybe pick somebody who doesn't get the ball a lot. That way they're given an opportunity and you're kind of manipulating the game that way, um, just so that all players are engaged. Um, the same thing with a, if a player is disinterested, um, just kind of do your best to encourage them and bring them in, find out what makes them excited um, and get them excited about playing. Um, don't just leave them off to the side on their own, kind of do your best to get them engaged. Okay. Um, again, right, we're not training Olympian players. This is just about, you know, kids getting out there, having fun, enjoying themselves and developing maybe a passion for soccer, right? It starts at the young age. It starts with just playing silly games. It starts with the fundamentals. So if they are dribbling or kicking this, the ball in the wrong direction, that's okay. They're five or they're three even, right? Um, just, you know, encourage fun, prioritize the fun. Um, if they're bunched up or um, they only dribble, they don't pass, don't worry about it, same concept. Um, if they don't listen to your directions while playing, don't worry about it. Um, they honestly, don't really even do that when they're 13 from my experience. So they're probably not gonna do that very well when they're four or five or six. So just do your best um, and just prioritize um, the fun. Don't start yelling at a kid because they didn't pass with the inside of their foot. Um, just say, hey, that was a great pass. Like, that was a great job. You're doing great. Um, stuff like that. Okay, so this kind of goes back to, you know, you set the bar for what your team is. And we want to prioritize fun and good, like, character growth. Um, so that starts with you. You are um, what they're going to model, what they're going to imitate. So just be positive um, to both parents and players. Um, there might be some parents that are really intense and really involved even at a young age just you know be positive be encouraging um and if something does get out of hand try and bring it down and if something really gets out of hand and you need to let me know just shoot me an email but um for the most part just kind of be you know what you want to see um so model the behavior you want them to show um yeah and then that goes against the <laughs> when you when I was talking about a really big confrontation, um, we want to avoid that at all costs, um, especially at the lowest. We don't want, you know, three-year-olds to see people, parents screaming at each other on the sidelines. So if something happens and, you know, it's something that you would want to confront, you know, just shoot me an email if it warrants that. Otherwise, just like, just walk away. Um, it's not worth it. Um, remember, kids are the priority. So just be the bigger person um, if you if the situation calls for it. Um, and then the postseason, going back just good, good positive um, sportsmanship. Tell the other team good game. Um, leave this, leave the area clean. Don't leave water bottles all around. Um, and then again, report any serious issues to me or the lead trainer, and they can report it to me. Oh yeah, and snacks. Don't forget snacks. Again, most important part. Okay. Um, okay, so back to who your contacts are. Again, I'm probably going to be your main contact. So that is how you can reach me. That's my email. Um, if you need to call me, that's on the website. You can just go to the website um, and get my phone number there. Um, and then Darren, you can also contact um, if you need to, and that's his number or his whip, um, email. Um, and then, yeah, if you have any questions that, you know, maybe you can find on your own, this is where you can find them, Coaches Info Center on our website or the Coaches Education Resource Center on the website. And then good luck. Um, I know a lot of you may not have gone into the season expecting to coach. Maybe you're coaching because your son was or daughter was on the wait list and couldn't get off the wait list or maybe something else happened and maybe, maybe it just wasn't your expectation to be coaching this season. Um, regardless of what you came into expecting, I know it's gonna be a really awesome um, spring for all of our kids and all of our players and for you. Um, so just keep a positive attitude and know like your player is going to, or your son or daughter, whoever you have, is honestly just going to love that you're there and that you are spending time with them and that you're coaching them. Like that might be 
one of their core memories for a long time. So um, just, I just hope you, you're going into the season optimistic and excited because I think it's going to be really great. Um, and again, if you need anything throughout the season, um, I am here for you. And if I can make it happen, I will make it happen. So don't be afraid to email me. Don't be afraid to call me. I know maybe if you email me in the last 48 hours, you, you haven't gotten a response back yet. That's not going to be how it is this season. There's just a very, very high email rate right now. So my inbox, I'm slowly making it through every email. So if that's you and you haven't received a response, know that I'm, I'm going to get back to you. Um, but yeah, throughout the season, just let me know um, how I can help you, how I can support you, because I want to do that for you. And that's it. Um, what time is it? Okay, so we have a few minutes left. Um, if I see the chat box, it has blown up, but I haven't been reading them because... I've been doing that, but I'm going to open it. And if you have any questions, go ahead. Um, Tammy, I think, is raising their hand. Do you have a question? Tammy? Okay. Mac, um, I can help out a little bit. So um, okay. good job. <clears throat> a good chunk of the questions had been answered. A very popular one is towards the end. There's, there's going to be a bunch of people that are going to be out because of spring break so there's like three or four of that question okay um that's been so if you want to address that yeah real quick on that um i would say the if you yourself are going to be out what i would encourage you to do is email your team and let them know hey i'm not going to be here and that goes for any session you're not going to be there for email your team parents and let them know um and let them know you're going to need help running that session i find parents are really helpful, especially if they don't have to have the title of head coach. Well, let me and share my screen. Sorry. Okay. Especially if they don't have to have the title of head coach. They're really eager to help. Um, so just let them know that there's a session that you're going to need help running um, and see who can help you with that. If your question is about having a few players not there, um, that goes back to kind of the slide I was talking about. If there's a team with a few players that have not shown up, um, the team that you're playing against, just ask them, hey, can we mix up today? Can we play um, a mix of, instead of doing team versus team, can we do a mix of um, players just to make things even and fair? Um, that's probably what I would encourage. If you have no players showing up, um, send me an email and I will make sure to notify the right people. But yeah, we can go you know case by case basis, but that's kind of the generic answer. So a uh, quick question on that. Yes. If you and your assistant coach are both not going to be there, I'm just clarifying, the trainer will still run the session so the team can still show up. But what about, since it's opening day, uh, uniform distribution? Will the trainer yes. handle that? No, I would, again, contact your team parents, say, hey, I'm not going to be here for the first day. Here's what I need help with. Who can, who can take what responsibilities. And the trainer is not going to be able to do it by themselves. So just let your parents know, hey, I'm going to need somebody to be on the field with the kids. Like you don't have to run the session, but who can help me just manage kids since I'm not going to be there and then um, see what responses you get. Um, parents should be willing to step up and do that. Especially since okay. you're not going to be there. Thank Sorry you. about that. It wouldn't let me unmute before. <laughs> That's okay. Um, just a quick question. I am also coaching fourth grade girls mm -hmm. and I had emailed, um, I think you were on one of the emails and Jamie was on the email. I'm double booked to be in the same right. place on the same days, but I don't know if that's just for the first two weeks because it, it won't conflict next week since, uh, just the fourth graders are starting next week. Yeah. Are you talking about your weekday practice? Yes. Okay. Um, if you're, you're double booked with your teams, you're saying they're at the same time, same time, different locations. Okay. That shouldn't happen. I'll talk to Jamie and you're probably one of the emails I just haven't gotten to yet. And I'm sorry okay. about that. Um, okay. I'll talk to Jamie and we'll deconflict those for you. I've been waiting to send out a welcome email just because I'm assuming yeah. one of them is going to change and I don't want to confuse anybody. Right. Um, definitely hold off on that and I will, I will get on that for you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, that shouldn't happen. So we will we'll deconflict that for you. Okay. Hi, I wanted to know if um, I'm coaching the mini. And I wanted mm -hmm. to know all the um, things that you had on that list that we need to bring. Is that all anything we have to like buy or do we get that all in? You can pick up. This is my first year. Yeah, so you should get all your equipment 
at the equipment pickup. There shouldn't really be much that you would need. You shouldn't need to buy anything. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah. Um, Mac, I have there's... a quick question. Go ahead, Madison. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Um, so on my um, volunteer login, it says I'm coaching pre-K, but it says pre-K and kindergarten. So does that mean that my team is going to have a weekday practice and Saturday or just Saturday? I'm just kind of confused on that part because it says I'm doing both um, levels. Yeah, so the division or the program itself is pre-K kindergarten, but if you have registered for pre-K, then it's just pre-K. Okay, so... And that and means you'd like, only have a Saturday session. Okay, because it's the co-ed one too, so I assume that's only Saturday. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. that's preschool and it's just it's just Saturday. Thank you. Yeah. Max, so a couple, a uh, little bit of confusion on the chat. Um, yes. Can you just clarify, so um, if people are... If coaches can't make the session, um, you you mentioned that some other parents attend. Do they have to go through a background check? Can you verify whether yeah. or not? That's so. That's more targeted towards don't, like people who are just coming from the outside, wanting to you know be there. If it's a parent, it's different. Um, but as far as like if you have a neighbor who's like, hey, I would love to help you coach they should go through the official registration first. Okay. Yeah. So, all right. So parent, parents, yes, can help. Yeah. Um, for spring break is, so no, no Saturday session for spring break. What yes. about the practice session for, um, what about the practice session that week? Is that off, is that off yes. as well? That's canceled I, I as well. I believe so, yes. I think all spring break, there's not, no sessions. Okay, so for that entire week. Yes. Um, okay, and then for weather, um, for practices, is that discretion of the coach uh, for the practice to cancel? Last year, um, there was downpours and, and they kept going because the fields hadn't, there was no notification that the field has been closed. Mm -hmm. So is that, could, could that be the discretion of the coach at that point for the practice sessions? Yeah. I mean, if you are out there and it's pouring down rain and none of your players are having a good time, feel free to call it. But as far as like field closures and stuff, um, and you're like, is it closed or not? You'll hear from us. So just know that you will be notified if something is closed for that. For the first game, um, mm -hmm. especially for the micros, which I know is like fun mayhem um, in a great way, <laughs> is there, you said, you know, get there five minutes before, will the trainer kind of go over the general rules of the game or is that something that the coach should try to do over email or something beforehand? Yes. It is, uh, well, I guess it's true for, eight, for all the rec one ages. Um, they probably won't go through all of the rules of a soccer game because it's not super applicable right now at right. this moment. Just general, um, like you're aiming yeah, towards like, that goal. And <laughs> yeah, like, hey, don't okay. use your hands. You're going that way. They, sh they should go over that and I'll make okay. sure okay. to tell them. But yeah, okay. they won't be like, hey, this is offside. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hopefully not. Okay, great, thanks. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just have an equipment pickup question. I know it said that um, the trainers kind of lead the session for the micros. Are they then getting the soccer balls and everything? Or are we getting that then handing it off to them on the first Saturday? That's where I'm just a little confused. Yeah, so come to equipment pickup because there'll be stuff for you to pick up. But then as far as like cones and stuff, they um, will have the, we'll have cones. Okay, so we'll basically just be getting the first aid stuff and the other things that were listed, not the balls and the cones yeah. and things. Okay. My question kind of goes in regards to that. Is the head coach picking up? Is the assistant coach? Do they something they just align together? Yeah, I would say head coach is responsible for picking it up, but um, I would view a head and assistant coach kind of as a co-partnership. So um, I think you guys should just be in communication. Um, but as far as like whose responsibility is it, head coach should come and do that. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, we're almost at the end of our time. So if there's a question about that pertains to you specifically, like, hey, I'm at, not at this field or my time, um, call me or shoot me an email and I'll answer that. But if there's anything else that's generic that needs to be answered, you can um, go ahead and ask. But we only have a couple minutes left. I have a question real quick on um, snaps. <laughs> is there like a, a template we use to send out to, for people to sign up or is that something to email the coach to send out just to ask? 
Yeah, I haven't made anything. If that would be helpful for you, um, I could put something together. But I would just send it in an email, say, hey, we need a snack schedule. These are the dates of all of our sessions. Who can do what date? And then just um, and is put it. it uh, is it just snacks for Saturday only? Or do you, or have you had snacks on weekdays as well? Yeah, I would just do Saturdays, Saturday sessions. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. And the coaches, they don't have to provide their personal email or phone number right, to, for the parents to get back uh, to them. I'm sorry, can you say that one more time? No, you you don't. You could use the the um, the site. So the site has a text function or an email function. Um, a quick tip, type it all, your email up in Word and then copy and paste in there. It, it, it helps to get everything out, but you don't have to use your personal email. You could right, use... But, uh, but the template itself has the placeholders in red and it says that put your email address and phone number. So Yeah, you don't have to provide yeah, it's optional. that. You can, you can yeah. communicate directly through the app. So if you don't want to share your personal phone number, you don't have to put it in there. Right, right. Understood. And if some of the sessions are get canceled because of weather, uh, are they going to be scheduled uh, falling, like, uh, incremented by another Saturday at the end? So, yeah. So the, the rain makeup day is June 11th. So if there is a session canceled, that will be the date that it's made up on. Understood. And for the last four uh, sessions, which would be head coach or the assistant coach who would be leading the, the, the sessions, right? If for, 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 say, for some reason, uh, the head coaches are, they're not available. So are those uh, sessions going to be canceled? No, sorry, from, I, you're talking I, about I the practice. The, no, the you, practice you do not, on, coaches, on, sorry, sorry, Ramsey. Yeah, go ahead. Coaches <laughs> do not cancel sessions at all. Right. And we will not make up those sessions for coaches that cancel those sessions, unfortunately, because we just we, we have we have too many, too many players and too many teams to, to get on the field. So if it's canceled because of weather and it's it's by Parks and Rec um, because of um, because we use their fields, we will make up those sessions. But if a coach cannot make a session, we will not make that up for you, unfortunately, unless we have a space somewhere um, that that suits uh, yourself and the team. Um, and and allows our our, our um, field staff to to get you on the field, and just just to um, th there's a there's some some stuff in the chat you're going back and forth about a parent um, signing up to coach. Any parent that steps onto the Loudon soccer field um, needs to sign up through through Sports Connect. They need to go through a background check, regardless if it's for one day or, or for all seven weeks. So so anybody that that volunteers their time for the program needs to register um, and then we take care of the rest. So uh, it's a two minute process. You guys have all gone through it. Um, two minute process to get registered and, and then we'll handle it to make sure that, that your players get on the field um, with or without you. Our trainers unfortunately cannot run the session on their own. Um, I'm not sure if, if you've run around with, with 12 three-year-olds. I have a three-year-old and uh, I love my son, but I, I wouldn't want to run around with 12 of them on, on my own. So um, just help the trainers out, see if someone can, uh, can get on the field with them. Um, and if, you, if you're unable to be at a session in weeks four, five, six, and seven in the pre-K and kindergarten groups, um, we will try our best to provide a trainer. But remember, we have... Um, we have over three and a half thousand kids just in second grade and under. So um, it's, it's a little bit, it's a little bit tough for us to do that. So try your best to, to get as many volunteer assistants as you can so that we don't have to cancel any sessions and, and everybody's squared away. So there's no questions asked at the end of the season. Right. right. And if I understand correctly, uh, absolutely makes sense what you said. Like if, if for some reason the coaching led sessions, then coaches are not available. Those sessions will unfortunately be cancelled, right? Not officially, but everybody has to go back because nobody can. There's, there will be no one to lead the sessions, right? On sure. Saturday, I, yeah. I, I, yeah, I would, I would reach out to your families and see if somebody can step up for the day that that you you're out of town yeah, right. and, and not okay. able to be there. Absolutely makes sense. Thank you. Yeah, and just ask. I mean, like you know, on the first practice, just ask the parents, like, hey, you know, I don't have an assistant coach. Is there anybody that could step up? If so, you know, there's a quick background check that goes on. You got to go through, through a PowerPoint presentation. Um, last year, I had an assistant coach. I have an assistant coach this year as well. But others had said, yeah, sure. You know, if, if for whatever reason you need some extra help, you know, let me know. So they'll like, I'm pretty confident with, with the size of the groups and everything like that, that you will find a parent that's willing to step up. And if you already know, you know, when you're going to be out on that particular week, 
you know, just the sooner you let them know, the better. And so they can just prep for uh, for coverage there. Yep. At, right. at, your, at, at the first session of, of the season, notice which parent is creeping and standing as close to the line as possible and pull them in and <laughs> then make go. them sign up on the field. <laughs> there is always there is always one that likes to creep and, and stand as close as they can. That's that's the person that you get to volunteer to help you. <laughs> That's a nice I, had, I had a question. I'm sorry if you answered this because I'm dealing with kids while during this with dinner. Um, but I, my, I'm a coach and my assistant coach are going to be out for spring break. And we're in micros. So how do we have some, because I already have, I've already asked other people on our team and I've already had someone who was willing to step up. So how do we make sure that they can go through the background track? Um, I have them have sign the up through, through Sports Connect. Uh, if they don't know how to do that, get them to to email Michaela and, and she'll she'll lead them in the in the right direction okay, so great. That we yeah. can we can get them on the field great thank yeah. you I have a question about uh the Dick's sporting goods discount which which location can parents go to is there a specific store or is it any in this area oh I actually don't know if I know that uh, the, there, are, there are there are three locations I will put mm -hmm. them I will put the the link into the chat so that you can see it. Perfect. Thank you. Awesome. Well, it is 715 and we have the rec one meeting right after. So if you ha still have a question, go ahead and email me and I can answer that for you. But we're going to have to close this up now. Um, but yeah, on that note, thank you guys so much for coming um, and joining us. I hopefully that was helpful. If you had any questions, um, hopefully we answered them throughout the presentation. Again, I'm going to try and make this presentation available so you can go back and look at it. But um, throughout the season, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, I want to help you and I want you to have a good season. So I'm your friend um, and I want um, I want your questions. So just send them to me and um, hopefully if I can do it, I will do it. So have a good rest of your night, guys. See you later. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.